Hey y'all, so we have been talking about uh, nutrition, being healthy, personal cleanliness, and in our last lesson, we discussed the five food groups. Um, but I kind of want to switch things up today, um, and I want to go to unit three, and we are going to focus on managing ourselves wisely using social and emotional positive action. So with that being said, at the beginning of every unit, if you guys remember, we have the patch. So we are at the patch part three. So we've been following the lives of Darren and Marshall. Um, Marshall learned that in order to build up his self-concept, he had to change his negative thoughts to positive thoughts. And that enabled him to do more positive actions and to feel good about himself. Marshall and Darian had made a pact to start eating better, to be healthy, to exercise, even when they are not able to be together. And Marshall also promised Darian that he would quit smoking, and he stuck with that. So in this unit, we're going to learn how to use positive actions to manage ourselves, to overcome anger, to overcome sadness, to overcome fear. As life tends to go, things got more complicated for Darian and Marshall pretty quickly. After the holiday season, Marshall's mom introduced him to her boyfriend, Charles. They had been dating for about a year. Right after they met, Marshall found out that Charles was moving in, along with his six-year-old son, Nat. And if that wasn't enough, Marshall and Nat had to share a bedroom. I was just getting comfortable with who I want to be, Marshall thought, and now I've got to deal with this. To say the least, Marshall was frustrated. First, his bed was sold and replaced with a bunk bed. At least Marshall got the top bunk. Then, every time he stepped on an action figure or found Nat's underwear and socks strewn all over the side of his room, Marshall's frustration grew. After a few weeks, he wasn't just frustrated, he was mad. Marshall knew if he stayed mad for too long, he would erupt. And when that happened, it wouldn't be pretty. So, going back to the patch, the first discussion question is, what might Marshall be thinking and feeling? He's feeling overwhelmed and angry, frustrated, because he doesn't want to share his home with a couple of strangers, much less his bedroom with a messy little kid that leaves his socks and underwear laying around everywhere. And on top of it all, it's hard for Marshall because he doesn't really know them. Now, we're going to read a story about a girl named Shannon who gets lost in space. Shannon cut the engine on her star cruiser and let the ship be pulled into the black hole, a giant whirlpool in space that was her shortcut home to planet Earth. The cruiser went down, down into the spinning, pulsating hull. Shannon sat back and relaxed. Suddenly, a red light flashed on the control panel. The computer's voice said, Alert, alert, time drive failure. Exit will not be at planet Earth. Exit in Beta Sector on Planet Photon. In a flash of green light, the ship broke from the black hole. The retro rocket spired and Shannon felt herself sink to a soft landing on the planet Photon. After the cruiser was resting on the surface, Shannon sat stunned for a few seconds, but she knew nothing would be gained by waiting. She needed to find help or to help herself. She would have to get out and inspect the ship to see what she could do. She stepped out into the eerie violet light and a strangely sweet smell like rotting fruit. The cushiony ground was covered with a mossy growth. Like rich green velvet, something grabbed her shoulder. She spun loose and grabbed for her laser. As she turned and brought it up to fire, she saw a simple, goofy-looking creature with mud pot eyes. It nodded and moved its floppy mouth. Maybe it was smiling, Shannon thought. I'm not an enemy, she said. I've had a mechanical problem with my cruiser. The creature stared at her and seemed to smile again. Can you help me, she asked. Shannon, or er, now more creatures came, a dozen or so. With their overgrown heads and furry bodies, they were twice Shannon's size, but they didn't seem aggressive. At least they carried no weapons. Shannon waited to see what they had in mind. They crowded around her, bumping each other and stepping on one another's enormous feet. They all waited, they all wanted to look at her, but wouldn't stay back far enough for everyone to see. The crush of creatures was 
a little frightening. Shannon thought one might stumble and fall on her, smishing her flat. I'm not an enemy, she said again. One of them, huge and dark purple, uttered a sort of honking noise. Immediately, the others responded chaotically. They all honked at once, each facing a different direction. Shannon thought of Earth's New York City, with all its honking taxis careening through the streets. Suddenly, the big one swooped her up and tromped away. The others seemed less than pleased by this. They stumbled forward, knocking each other around as they went. But they moved in one direction in spite of their confusion. Carrying Shannon carefully, the big creature covered several miles with remarkable speed. He took steps the size of swing sets, creating a ride just as looping. As they traveled, more of the creatures tumbled in with the crowd. Shannon had never seen anything so wild. All those furry monsters honking and stumbling and falling. If she hadn't been so scared, she would have laughed. They came to a gate in a building as big as a spaceship hang hangar. The gate slid aside and the crazy crowd rushed in. At the sound of an intense shrieky conk, they rushed back out. When the building was cleared, in walked the big creature. He stood before a huge chair, which nonetheless barely held another one of the furry creatures. This one was more purple than the others, and if anything, a little goofier looking. He honked at Shannon, his lips flapping. I'm not an enemy, Shannon said a third time. English, he said, or Shannon thought so. Yes, English. I'm from Earth. My cruiser needs repair. I'll leave immediately if you can help. Those muddy eyes stared at her for a moment. Then the creature seemed to say, Help? Yes, help. I need help. The king, or whatever he was, gave another wild shrieking honk, and suddenly chaos broke loose again. Ten or twelve photon creatures charged into the room, carrying a huge basket of metal objects, chunks of all sizes. Stumbling over each other and crashing into things, they dumped all the metal pieces in front of Shannon, practically knocking her over with the stuff. Help, the king said, gesturing awkwardly to the, ha the hazardous pile. Money. Oh, thank you, but no. What I need is a repairman. Again, the creature shrieked, and again, the place turned into a madhouse. But this time, all the assistants, or whatever they were, just seemed to run about in circles. The This only set off more shrieking and more frantic running about. And then one of them stepped forward and gave a big nod. Repairman, he said. You? You're a repairman? You can fix my star cruiser? The creature considered the question, and then, and then he, or maybe she, said, Maybe next year. Busy now. Shannon knew she was in real trouble. So for the activity based on this story that we just read about Sharon, um, I would like for you guys to answer these five questions. So how would you feel if you were dropped into a completely different planet? Um, what, are, what are some feelings that you might have? We call those feelings emotions. So my second question is, how can emotions help us? How can they sometimes be our enemies? The third question is, if I said a person was well-rounded, what do I mean by that? The fourth question is, what do you think about Planet Photon? Would you like to live there? And what seems to be wrong about Planet Photon? And the last question is, what do you guys think about the photon creatures? Describe something you have seen on Earth that reminds you of photons. So in this unit, we will discuss one of our most important social and emotional needs, the need to use our gifts wisely. We will be seeing more of Photon and Shannon. Um, photons are nice creatures. They just need to learn positive actions that will help them waste less time and create some order. But maybe photons aren't the only ones in the story that need to practice using those positive actions. Between now and our next positive action lesson for Thursday, think about ways that you use your energy. Um, have you ever caught yourself spending all your energy on one activity when you should be spending it on something more important?